thank you, Lord. We know that she belongs to you, but you let us borrow her for 86 years. And we say thank you. Thank you for lending her voice that melodiously sang your praises. Thank you, God, for the gifts that you've given her, God, to impact our life. Thank you for the words of encouragement. Thank you for the hugs, for the kisses, God, for the love that she showed each of us. I don't know if Dolores Bailey had an enemy. She loved everybody. We thank you for her life today. We've come, God, to give you glory in this place, to magnify you in this place, and to let your praises be heard in this place. We give you glory, honor, and praise now in Jesus' name. Have your way in this place. Comfort this family. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Bless Bruce now. Bless God all of this family who mourns on today. But what we're going to do in this moment of sacred worship is give you praise, give you glory, and give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, all but the family, would you stand as we sing our congregational hymn led by uh, Miss Tanette Daniels, leaning on the everlasting Lord. Before we uh, move forward with our program, I'm going to ask the pallbearers, we have um, a section, uh, some seating reserved for you so that we can find you at the conclusion of 
uh, worship minister Briscoe can assist you um, with where you need to be. All of the pallbearers, would you at this time uh, come forward um, and uh, our team will assist you and that will open up some seats. Amen. In y'all seats. Amen. Thank you so very much. This time we're going to have scripture reading by Pastor Rick Wooten. Uh, the Old Testament, Psalm 23, New Testament, John 14, uh, 1 through 6. Following that, prayer of comfort by Pastor Deborah Grant. And then uh, Miss Tanette Dangers is going to come back with another selection in that order. Thank you, Pastor. We take our reading from Psalms 23, Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. As he leads me beside the still waters, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, turn to somebody and say, yeah. yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Tell me why. Because your rod and your staff, they both comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, as you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, somebody say surely. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. As I choose, it's a choice, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Well, to God be the glory. All right, we're taking our second reading out of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. It says, but you can't conclude that without 7. So here we go. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. For it's in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I am going, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said unto him, somebody said, uh-oh, Thomas about to get in trouble. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know whether you go, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, this is where he got in trouble. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, from henceforth, you know him and you have seen him. Can we give the Lord a hand for his word? Amen. Sound like we have some word lovers in the place. Praise God. I'm still basking on leaning on the Lord, leaning on the arms of the Lord. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Praise God. Let's have another word of prayer. Father, we are still basking in your presence. We thank you for the sweetness of your presence in this place. Father, truly this is a celebration. the body is to be present with our Lord. Father, we rejoice because Mother Bailey made a public acknowledgement in her life that she received Jesus as her Lord and her Savior. Therefore, we don't sorrow as those who have no hope, but we know that all those who have fallen asleep in you, when you return, you will bring those with you. So, Father, on today, we lift up this service to you today. Father, we pray for this family. We pray for the Bailey family. We pray for all of the friends, loved ones that have gathered here in this place. Lord, let everything that's done be an expression of your love on today. Every song that's ministered, every card that's read, even the word of life that shall come from Pastor Dockett. God, we lift up the man of God. We thank you that you would flood his very spirit with your voice. That God will not hear man, but we will hear you in the name of Jesus. And Father, this family will leave out today encouraged, strengthened, and full of the joy of the Lord. 
which is their ability to continue. So Holy Spirit, we say have your way in this place until you alone receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, say amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your participation in this service. At this time, we'll have remarks um, by, I'm sorry, Tanel, I'm sorry. I apologize too fast. Come on. Amen. Amen. With transition, no on earth the move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, oh to God's unchanging hand. Oh, you ought to just hold to His hand. Oh, God's unchanging. Oh, hold to His hand. to him claim oh you ought to just hold to his hand oh god done changing oh hold to his oh yeah god done changing oh just build your hopes on things eternal oh you ought to just hold to god's unchanging hand oh when your journey is completed. Oh, and to God you have been true. Oh, go and pride your home in glory. Oh, your enraptured soul you view. Oh, you ought to just hold to it. Oh, yeah, God done. Ah, come on and hold. Oh, yeah. Oh, build your hopes. Your oh, hopes on the return. Oh, you ought to just hold to God. Let's say that one more time. You ought to just hold to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, you ought to just hold. Oh, Changing hand, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh to God's unchanging hand. Couldn't you just see Miss Bailey's hand going like this? Couldn't you just, couldn't you just see her going like this? Come on, you ought to hold to his hand. Oh yeah, somebody God's unchanging hand. Oh, you ought to hold. To his hand, yeah, God unchanging hand. You ought to feel your hopes on things eternal. Come on and hold to God unchanging hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sometimes that's all you can do is just hold on. Amen. You got to hold on so you don't give up. Okay. All right. At this time, I am going um, to decrease for the moment. We're going to follow the program as uh, the family has prepared it through the duration. Uh, we'll have remarks from Evangelist Sharon Latimer from the Salt Ministry uh, here at One Church. Miss Shantice Grant, uh, the granddaughter, is going to come and give remarks. 
uh, Mr. Bruce Bailey, the son, is going to come and give remarks. We'll have acknowledgments read by Minister Janice Briscoe, Janet Briscoe, uh, and then the obituary will be read aloud by uh, Mrs. Diana Bailey. Um, and then Song of Preparation by Miss Tanette Daines is going to come back. And then I will return with the eulogy in that order. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're holding on to his hand. Amen. Amen. You better watch out, girl. I almost got in there. You know that? <laughs> hey! Hold on. Yes. Praise our God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has acted. Did. Amen. Praise our God. Good afternoon, church. I come here this morning thanking God and praising God because he is the great I am. Amen. Thank God for our pastor, Pastor Alvin Dockett. Praise God for Pastor Wooten. Amen. Praise God for uh, our pastor, Michelle, Dr. Melvin Latimer. Amen. And all the saints of God. Amen. We're just so glad to be here. I'm honored to be here because Sister Bailey was our girl, amen? amen? Praise our God. We come to honor her on today. I would like for all the SALT ministry to please stand. Please stand. Amen, amen. Sister Beatrice Dolores Bailey was a faithful member of our fellowship, amen? amen. She was kind, she was loving, she was committed, she was loving, she was giving. She was a wonderful woman of God. Most of all, she was saved. She was sanctified. She was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she loved the Lord thy God with all her heart, mind, and soul. Salt means that we are seniors, okay? Seniors. Amen. Seniors activating love and truth. Amen. Amen. And I, you know what was happening right now? I got two things going on, two emotions. I'm saddened because I'm going to miss her. But I'm rejoicing because she's yet with the Lord. Amen. So if you would uh, indulge me for just a few minutes, would you please open up your mouth, clap your hands, and give the almighty God a mighty praise. Because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. We had a soldier that's gone on home to be with the Lord. She made it in y'all. So it's all right now. So come on, open your mouth. Tell God thank you. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Because you're worthy. And our praise is our worship. few days after my grandmother passed, uh, my dad asked me to speak on behalf of uh, her grandchildren um, at her going home party. I call this a party because obviously we all here to celebrate her, you know. I agree because, duh, who else would be better to do it, you know. But as the days passed, I still had no speech. Um, it dawned on me that I can only speak on behalf of my personal relationship with my grandmother because it was one of a kind. She loved all of us, but I was glued to her hip. Now, here it is, the morning of, and I still have no speech. Um, it's kind of hard saying goodbye when I'm so used to saying, I love you, see you next time, Grandma. Most of you don't know this, but I had to say goodbye to my other biological grandmother three months ago. So. As you can imagine, this is one of the hardest things I've ever had to endure. I 
I'm all right. I just can't see. It's a little blurry. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So uh, I'm sure you can only imagine this is one of the hardest things I've had to endure. Um, having to deal with both those losses so close together. Um, but again, this is my moment to love both of them out loud, so here I am today. Um, if you know me through my grandmother, it's more than likely that it's from her church. Um, again, like I said, I was blue to her hip at Second Baptist. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Shanties. That name floats. <laughs> she had me in every youth program possible. It's like I was practically her daughter at the time when I was younger. Um, from youth choir to hanging with her at work to traveling with her, she had me everywhere, but I loved it. She's the reason I love to sing, dance, and overall just make sure the people around me are having a good time. I say all that to say, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I said that about both of my grandmothers because they both knew how to make people laugh. She also gave me this smart mouth, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> Y'all know my grandmother didn't play. I say all that to say, although my remembrance of her is one of a kind and unique, we all will forever remember her for her singing, her faith in Christ, her joy, and most of all, always having her hair laid and slayed. I love you so much, Grandma. Rest peacefully and continue to watch over me as I continue my journey here in life. And um, I know you all are being watched over as well because again, like the, the young lady who went prior to me, she loved everyone in an abundance around her. God bless. All right. I don't know where she gets that from. First of all, let me say thank you for everybody who came out to show my mom and celebrate my mom. Um, as y'all know, real quick before I kind of get into, you know, whatever I'm going to talk about, I wanted to acknowledge my older sister. Dolores, stand up for me real quick. This is my mom's sister. I mean, I'm sorry. This is my mom's daughter. I keep calling her sister. Her sister is here also. But they ran the same age, so it really don't matter. But um, my mom, there are so many stories I can tell about my mom, like a like hundred gillion million stories, right? And I was trying to think of a nickname for her, and two of the things that really popped in my, my head was, as Shanti said, sassy, but classy. When I first really began to, you know, go to junior high and, 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 and as I was transitioning from elementary, I remember vividly the days where I used to go to Department of Transportation. And I always would see my mom just so classy, but yet so sassy. And I used to always question, mom, how are you talking to your boss like that? And she had no, she didn't, it didn't matter who it was. It didn't matter what it was. She would always be a straight shooter. And if you look around, if you know her close friends, Lula, Miss Yvette, yeah, you know, I'm looking at you too. They just all the same. Every last one of them. Like Miss Yvette, me and my wife, we sitting in church and Miss Yvette, she don't say hi or nothing. <laughs> Open the garage. <laughs> How you doing? But that, that, was, that was something that rang true for my mom. And then one of the other things is how receptive my mom was, right? Um, when my wife and I first got married a, a couple years ago, you know, I was, I was like, yeah, you know, people can come over. 
my daughters, they can have friends come over. You know, my son, they friends, they just stop by. They, they go in the refrigerator, all that type of stuff. Walk all up and down the steps. I was good. But she wasn't used to that. So mama, my mama had one of them houses that everybody was at. Where Rosalie at? Rosalie, her son, Andrew, he's sitting over there. He was at the house, and he lived next door. Why are you at my house? My cousin, brother, like Mike right there, he's, I, I woke up one day, he just was living with us. I didn't know what that was about. I'm like, who are you? Right? Chick, stuffy, I mean, the list goes on and on. My man Skiba over there, Skiba was, is her, one of her most recent adopted sons. Oh, got Matt right there. I mean, it's a bunch of them in here. But Skiba came to the hospital on one of the last days. He and his wife came to the hospital. And as soon as she, she came, he came in, uh, Skiba and Lydia, she said, Skiba, Lydia. Now, this is about three days before she transitioned. The one thing that I took away from my mom is she never lost her mind. From her last days, she remembered everything. Even from the moment when Lydia and them got there, she said, yeah, y'all gonna let Bruce come back for uh, fireworks? That's an inside joke, Skeever. Keep it to yourself. But mom had, had gone over to us to do fireworks. Um, but let me share this story with you guys and then I'm gonna get out the way. Because I know a lot of you guys are probably asking, you know, what happened? How it happened? How did she transition? When I say my mom, Frank Sinatra, this thing, she did it her way. Literally. The day that it happened, that weekend, my aunt had called me. And I put my aunt on speakerphone to talk to her sister. And, um, um, and her sister just said, hold on, I'm coming. That Monday, I went to pick my aunt up from uh, the train station. We went directly to the hospital. We walked in the hospital. My aunt was trying to talk to my mom, but my mom was heavily sedated, so she really couldn't communicate back. So my aunt was like, well, Bruce, you talk to her, you wake her up. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, Mom, Dolores, wake up. Your sister here. I said, do you hear? I said, do you hear, you hear, um, you hear Carol? She said, mm-hmm. And she laid her head back down. I said, okay, Carol, I'm going to leave y'all here so y'all can spend some time together. I'm going to go home and I'm going to get some work done. I went to use the restroom. By the time I came back out the restroom, I heard beep, and the nurses were coming in, and they said, we need to report to the chaplain. We didn't know what was happening in the numbers. Her heart rate had went from 115 down to 30, and it was fluctuating back and forth from zero to 30, right? During that period of time, I kept calling Diana. She was downstairs cooking breakfast unbeknownst to me. I run home and I get her. We get back to the hospital. Diana reads Psalms 23. She read that to her. The minute, the second Diana said amen, my mother took her last breath from transition. Now here's the ironic thing about this. Pastor Rick just read that. But ironically, we didn't know that that was her favorite scripture. She had already had it planned out that that was the scripture she wanted in her, in her going home program that she had already filled out. When I say the epitome of Holy Ghost filled, Holy Ghost driven, an assignment and obedience to the word of God, my mom exemplified that to me. The strength for her never to waver in her emotions. I ain't never seen or met nobody that actually, you, 
hell could be breaking loose around her and she'd just be just as sturdy. And a lot of times people misinterpret that for her not caring. But it was her relationship with Holy Ghost. She understood that greater is he that's in me than the he that's in the world. So I applaud my mother today. I celebrate my mom for putting the foundation in me to know once you came, you got to come back. So again, I just thank y'all. I appreciate y'all for all the lives that she had impacted, touched, spoken a word over. Thank y'all for being there for her. Thank y'all for being friends like no other. Because I'm going to tell you, I'll leave y'all with this one story. When I first saw my mama shout and her wig fell off. Okay, that's, um, that's another time. That's another time. It, that did happen. That did actually happen. But thank y'all so much. Bless y'all. I appreciate y'all and God bless. Praise the Lord. I will be reading some cards and letters on behalf of the family. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Thoughts of sympathy and love are being sent to you, as well as prayers for strength and comfort. Missions Ministry. The Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old rugged cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners were slain. So I will cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. May God promise his comfort you and sustain you. May his steadfast love be your strength and your hope with deepest sympathy, with sincere sympathy. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In burdened pastures he gives me repose. Before restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. In this time of sadness, the Lord who knows your every need will be your comfort and those who love and care for you will be holding you in prayer. May your heart be comforted. I will read one more card and then two letters. Good memories and sweet stories, they come into our lives like pennies from heaven. Reminding us in small, unexpected ways that we have loved and been loved. To Bruce Bailey and family, wishing you the blessing of memories and the comfort of love each time you remember. We're keeping your family in our prayers, One Church Salt Ministry. To the family of Sister Patrice, Dolores Bailey, Beatrice, did somebody just correct me? Did you just correct me? You better believe it. Let me start over. Can I start over with this letter? Thank you. To the family, oh, uh, she's okay. To the family of Sister Beatrice, Dolores Bailey. 
It is with great sadness that we at Second Baptist Church Southwest learned about the passing of Sister Bailey. She was very special in the hearts of everyone at this branch of Zion, and her memory will always be cherished. We understand that this is a difficult time for you, and we want you to know that we are here to offer our support in any way possible. Although words may seem inadequate to express our condolences, we pray that God's comfort and peace will be with you during this time of loss. The Holy Spirit is a great comforter and will always be there to console you. All you have to do is ask, and he will be there to help you through this difficult time. Please know that the Second Baptist Church Southwest family is here for you and that we care deeply about your well-being. Sister Bailey was a remarkable woman, and we know that her spirit will continue to live on in the hearts of all who knew her. If there is anything we can do to help you during this time, please do not hesitate to reach out. Again, we express our condolences and sincere, extend our sincere love. Yours in Christ, Reverend Wallace Baxter III, Pastor. And last but not least, to Mr. Bruce Bailey and the family of Sister Beatrice Dolores Bailey. We, the One Church family, send our love and condolences to you for the loss of your loved one, Sister Bailey. During this difficult time, we commend you to the capable hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, knowing that he can give you peace and comfort. Sister Bailey, affectionately called by all, her, all here at One Church as Miss Bailey, was deeply loved and would be greatly missed by her church family. Miss Bailey faithfully attended Sunday worship services where she was known for leading the Amen Corner. She also attended Tuesday night discipleship classes and the prayer clinic. Miss Bailey is noted in the church history as a charter member and united with one church at the interest meeting held in April 2017. She was most proud of being an active member of the first ministry established at one church, SALT. Seniors Activating Love and Truth. I'm going to join that ministry. <laughs> Miss Bailey was always one of the last to leave the sanctuary on Sunday mornings as she was constantly surrounded by the members of the church who were waiting to get a hug, kiss, smile, laugh, or words of encouragement from her. Miss Bailey had a special generational gift as she endeared the young women of the church and could frequently be found imparting words of wisdom. We, the One Church family, are confident that God loaned her to us and has now afforded her a home in eternity. We believe the words of Jesus in John chapter 14 that encourages us. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. To the Bailey family, we know you will miss your loved one dearly, but she leaves behind a rich legacy in the lives of all she touched and the beautiful family that is represented in each of you. Continue to let her legacy of love and services to the Lord shine by serving the Lord with all your heart mind and soul humbly submitted on this 28th day of march 2024 pastor leadership and membership of one church reverend alvin w duckett phd lead pastor amen
All right. Good morning, church. Psalms 37 and 4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of their heart. You know, when Bruce was up here talking about how Dolores went out, I was, I'm, it's a bittersweet moment for me, too. I was, we was just prepping to take care of her, and I'm like, Dolores, why would you do this? So when you live your life delighted, guess what? Dolores laid down her life. She gave up her life. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm thinking we're going to spend so much time with her, and, you know. It is what it is. I'm mad at her. Me and her sister, we mad at her. Like, how you just going to go out like that? But she definitely had a plan, and I'm mad at her that I got to read this long obituary that she wrote herself. <sighs> so bear with me. Hallelujah. B. Dolores Bailey was born on August 21st, 1937 in St. Simons Island, Georgia, to Charles L. and Victoria E. Smith. Dolores was raised in a Christian home and grew up in Harrington Church of God in Christ, where her grandmother was mother, was the mother of the church, and her grandfather was a deacon. As a child and young adult, she attended First A.B. Church in Frederica and was baptized there at the age of 12. She was a member of the Sunday school and, and, and the children's church. As an adult, she taught the primary class and was a member of the gospel choir. Dolores received her elementary education in the historic Harrington School on St. Simons Island and her middle and high school education at Risley Middle and Risley High School in Brunswick, Georgia. After graduation, Dolores moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with her parents where she continued her education at Columbia Business School. She joined Penn Memorial Baptist Church and sang in the gospel choir. She also sang with the Philadelphia Choral Union, a local chapter of the James Cleveland Workshop, until 1966, when she relocated to Washington, D.C. Continuing in her Christian walk, she joined Second Baptist Church in Southwest under the pastorate of Reverend Jesse A. Brown. She was a dedicated member for 51 years. During her membership, in Second Baptist, she served, a committee, she served as committee member of Brownie Troop number 388. I'm sorry, y'all don't have my glasses on. Director, Girl Scout Troop number 320, counselor of the Youth Crusaders, which was later reorganized as the United Fellowship Choir, director, Board of Education, member of the director of the Gospel Ensemble. For two years, Dolores was appointed co co co-chair for the church and pastor's anniversary celebrations. She also served as treasurer for the youth department. The senior usher board featured Dolores in a recital at one of their anniversaries. Dolores was funny and had a role in all the plays. She called herself Funny Bruce. She was funny and had a role in all the plays that were staged by Second Baptist. In addition to her involvement in Second Baptist, she was also a member of the St. James Community Choir for 25 years, and she served as president for, for two of those years. She was a member of the Thomas A. Dorsey and James Cleaver Workshops. In 2017, Dolores changed her membership from Second Baptist Southwest to One Church DMV under the pastorate and founder of Reverend Alvin W. Dockett, Ph.D. She was one of the, the charter members and loved her pastor and all the members of her church. The Lord's enjoyed going anywhere with her girlfriends, a great deal which involved a lot of traveling. She could also sing well and sung for years in the church. She was a member of her church group, SALT, Singers Activating Truth and Love, and she was involved in a church who danced with her ministry. She also enjoyed going to farmer's market, doing crossword puzzles, watching sports. I won't say that name, the game shows. She loved cooking. And her family would miss her turkey wings, mac and cheese, pigtails and beans, sweet potato pies, and candy yams. Dolores retired from the federal government in 1996. Her retirement was short-lived for one year. She was employed at Safeway Driving School, retiring from there in 2013. She would, gladly, she would, she would be greatly missed by all who knew and loved her. Dolores leaves to cherish her memories, her daughter Eunice Shelton, um, son and daughter-in-law, Bruce and Diana Bailey, stepmother, Margie B. Smith, sister, Carol Jones, six grandchildren, Shant Shantice Grant, Jasmine, Jayla, Jordan Bailey, Latori and Calvin Johnson, nephews and nieces, and two grandchildren, Cynthia and, I'm sorry, godchildren, my glasses, 
Cynthia and Andrew Dor Dorsey. She also leaves to cherish her memories, Caritha and Daniel Lyons, and Levita and Devin Bassett, who were like her children and were always there whenever she needed them. Dolores was preceded in death by her parents, George, I'm sorry, by her parents, Charles L. and Victoria E. Smith, sister Charlene Alford, nephew Anthony Smith, and her first daughter-in-law, Kamalita Bailey. She wrote all of that, y'all. Mom was like, uh, is there anything personal about her? It's like a resume. <laughs> but she was a great woman. And Bruce also, if it's okay, he wanted me to read the poems. Is that okay? To my honey bun from your son. You can read yours? Okay. To my honey bun from your son. Words during such an occasion is means to an end. You were, you were and are my confidant, my voice of reasoning, and more importantly, my friend. So many good memories within my childhood, you were the first to teach me to sing. I would have sung you a song today, but you know funerals just aren't my thing. Remember our duets or when you would lead songs at church just so that I could continue the rest? I liken it to the life you started for me, just like with singing, and I promise I'll do my best. You also taught me to be emotionally stable. You were consistent. You prayed, remained faithful, and quite committed to all that you did. Always the life of the party. I don't recall any low times. I experienced a good life, even as a kid. People often claim I'm spoiled. And now that you're resting, I will kindly debate that it was those quick hands of Dolores Bailey that often got me straight. Ma, I will miss you being there for me. You would like no other, you, I'm sorry, you would like no other. You're my hero and my strength. When God assigned you as a mother, he went to a very great length. Scripture, Ephesians 3, 14 through 18. For this reason, I know my knees of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And he would grant you, according to his riches of, the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye may be filled with all fullness of God. Love you, Mama, from Bruce. Aww. Okay, um, and then I'll read Jayla's poem. I'm going to try to sound like you, Jayla. Granny girl, <laughs> where do I start? Let me just speak from the heart. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, grandmothers are many things. A friend, a storyteller, and a sharp mouth who can get away with saying anything she pleases. A source of wisdom, a confidant, and someone who would give it to you straight. She loves beyond faults. One of my all-time favorite memories of my grandmother is going to the lockdowns at her church when I was young. Boy, how I miss that. I wish I could rewind time, but one day when it's my time, we can all have the lockdowns. We can, we can have all the lockdowns, and you can finally show me all your recipes. Until then, watch over me and give my mommy a hug for me. Oh, I love you, Grandma, forever. Your baby girl, Jayla Belly. Okay, so my poem is titled, Little Miss Sassy. Granny girl, where do I start? Let me just speak from the heart. The things that stand out the most is how you lived your life. One thing for certain is you never missed a flight. You rip and ran, feet barely touching the ground. From cruises to water aerobics to the praise dance team, you love the Lord. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention he was the only man you fed. <laughs> My sassy girl, who was always in charge and on the move, had fun up there. P.S. I know you're going to give God a run for his money trying to keep up with you, little Miss Busybody. Love, Jasmine. Oh, 
Hello. I'm Latori. I'm the oldest grandchild of Dolores. We were not ready. We were not ready for your bright light to dim. Now we have to bear this pain of life without you here. But no worries, God's got us. Sorry you left us here to grieve. But in the end, you did your best. Now you're our angel. You will be missed. That is for sure. And I pray you know we all love you. From Eunice, Latori, and Ernest. We're her family from New Jersey. This is my dad, her nephew. Okay, so I'm gonna read the poem from my grandmother, her sister. Dear Lord, my world seems a little empty at this moment. I'm missing my beloved sister who played a very important role in my life. The only woman who knew me inside and out was my sister. We shared so many things we held inside throughout the years, whether it was good or bad. Sometimes she shared with me her hopes, dreams, past and future thoughts with me, my sister. Her experiences from the past and all the wonderful things she's accomplished throughout the years have made her who she is today, my sister. I thank you for accepting me without judgment, my sister. I thank God for blessing me with a loving and caring sister, a heart of gold and a voice of platinum, my sister. You will always be missed, honored, remembered, and respected. Love your baby sister, Cal. from her nephew, Ajani Smith. Auntie, I will miss and love you. I remember being your favorite. I remember I used to walk like you <laughs> when I was younger. I will miss your smile and thanks for knowing, thanks for knowing you for my lifetime. Love your nephew, Ajani. Amen. Amen. Sister Beatrice had a wonderful, God-filled, God-fearing, okay, life. Amen. Legacy is important. And she has left a wonderful, 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 wonderful legacy. Amen. Give God a hand for the legacy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mom. 
Lord, Lord, I will live my life to the hills, knowing my help is coming from you. Oh, 
praise. We lift our hand. We lift our hand. We lift our hands. Let's just give him 30 seconds of worship while we, we lift our hands. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. If thou wilt draw thyself from me. chapter 5 <clears throat> Matthew chapter 5 and at the 14th verse just share a few thoughts. I'm not a long-winded eulogist. If we are late to the cemetery, it won't be because of me. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Just for about 10 minutes, I want to, this celebration of life for Sister Bailey, Miss Bailey as we called her. I want to talk about lasting impressions. Lasting impressions. Optics is the branch of physics that studies sight, the behavior of light, the properties of light, and how light interacts with matter. Sight is the result of the complex interaction of light, eyes, and the brain. What we see is the result of light from an object moving through space, and once light reaches our eyes, signals are sent to our brain, and our brain deciphers the information to detect the appearance, location, and movement of the objects we have in our sight. And as complex as this process is, in its simplicity, without light, there would be no sight. See, my brothers and sisters, we erroneously think that optics is what we see and how we are seen. But optics is not how we are seen. Optics is the study of how we see. Because optics is not the study of the object that is seen. Optics is the study of the light that allows the object to be seen. And if we are truly concerned about the optics, we would be less concerned about being seen and how we are seen and more concerned with how people see. See, a light does not shine to be seen. Let me say it again. A light does not shine to be seen. The light shines so that you can see. You don't turn on a light to see the light. You turn the light on so you can see. That's why the text says, who turns on a light and then puts it under a basket? When you turn on a light, you put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house so that those who are in the house can see what is in the house. 
Yeah. Light is not trying to be seen, my brothers and sisters. Light exists to dispel darkness so that all who are in the house can see. Because those who need to see need light. Because without light, there is no sight. And the problem is, most people are concerned with being the object and not the light. You want to be seen and not help illuminate so that others can see. My brothers and sisters, Dolores Bailey was a light. She was not concerned about the optics of being seen. She was concerned with helping other people see. She didn't need her light to shine so that we could see Dolores Bailey. She would shine her light so that everyone in the vicinity of her light could see clearly. There are three things I'm going to my seat quickly that I just want to reflect today. First and foremost, Miss Bailey wanted to help us see God's goodness. She wanted to help us see God's goodness. If Miss Bailey had strength in her body, Miss Bailey was in church on Sunday. Sundays were for church for Dolores Bailey. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. And Miss Bailey didn't just go to church, she would have church. Miss Bailey led the Amen Corner. She never let her pastor flunk because she gave the loudest Amens. Whether I was preaching good or wasn't saying nothing at all, I could always count on Miss Bailey because Miss Bailey understood the assignment. <laughs> Miss Bailey understood that when praises go up, blessings come down. I, I remember Bruce mentioned it, but I remember one Sunday at, at one church. We were on Bexley Place at this time, and the Spirit of God came in one church, and Miss Bailey dropped that cane and commenced to shouting. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. And, and, and when and, and, and when she couldn't shout. She would lift her voice. And when she couldn't lift her voice, she would wave her hand. And not just Sundays, but she attended everything. Anything that was going on at one church, Miss Bailey was here. She never let her illness be a deterrent to her serving God. One church was, was, was virtual for three years. Uh, and a year of that, we were preparing this building. And let me just say, we wouldn't have had this building if it wasn't for Miss Bailey. Yeah, she for three years, and and we would be uh, on Zoom having church, and Miss Bailey would chat all of my sermon points, all all of the points. I mean, you could count on Miss Bailey, Amen, Pastor, and and chat it out to everybody. I guess Caritha showed her how to work the Zoom machine. <laughs> and, and and you know what? I I purchased some books. For our welcome center in the lobby for visitors and I, I bought these books that I wanted to hand out as special gifts to the visitors but uh, and I had a special message um, that I wanted to write inside but the problem is I write like a first grader and I asked Miss Bailey if she would write this special message for me and y'all Miss Bailey had penmanship like an artist I mean she could write it was beautiful she, she, could, she could write. And, and not only was Miss Bailey in church, but she wasn't in a rush to leave church either. <laughs> she would sit and talk to everybody leaving church. She had a longer line than I did. <laughs> More people would be standing around trying to get to Miss Bailey than me. <laughs> she, she talked with the younger women in the church. She she gave in support. I'm just trying to help y'all be a light, trying to show you what a light looks like. She showed up to be faithful with God, and she shined her light so that we would see the goodness of God. But not only did she shine her light so that we would see the goodness of God, she would also, she wanted us to see the greatness of God. She wanted us to see God's greatness. Um, before I met Miss Bailey personally, I heard the voice. It's only about three people that said amen. Y'all must didn't know she had a voice. That girl could sing. 
and, and Miss Bailey grabbed that mic and started singing a song that said, Lord, you're everything to me. You said you would my comfort be. God said he'd be right there. My God is everywhere. God said it. I believe it. And I'm going to take him at his word. She wanted us to see the greatness of God. And one Sunday here at one church, we brought Miss Bailey out of retirement. And, and she took that mic. I wasn't sure how, how much strength she had. But she grabbed that mic and said, makes no difference what the problem can go to God in prayer. Yes, I have this blessed assurance. I can go to God in prayer. He will take my gloom and sorrow and turn it into light. Woo! Can I tell you what else she said? He will comfort, strengthen, and keep me. I can go to God in prayer. She said, Our Father, uh, up in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. I can go to God in prayer. And she didn't stop there. She also said, he can work it out. He, he can work it out. Yes, he can. Uh, okay, all right. I said, yes, he can. Miss Bailey let her light shine because she wanted us to see God's goodness and she wanted us to see God's greatness. I'm almost done. The last thing is, Miss Bailey wanted us to see God's glory. The text says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Jesus is not saying that our light is intended for recognition. Jesus is, is, is not saying to us, listen to me carefully, that, 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 that your light is going to be recognized. He doesn't even suggest that you'll be appreciated for your light. What Jesus is saying is that the impact of your light is such that whether you are recognized for your light or the contribution of your light, that contribution outweighs the recognition of your light. Yeah. I, I have not known Miss Bailey as long as many of you. I've only known her for just over a decade. This year would, would be 10 years that I met Miss Bailey. And yet I found myself overwhelmed trying to organize the profusion of Miss Bailey memories in my mind. I found myself trying to organize all this stuff into some type of succinct presentation today with all of these memories that I have in my mind of, of Miss Bailey, that she 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 loved me, y'all. She believed in me. She 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 loved me, and she believed me and Miss Bailey, Bruce. I'm gonna tell you the secret. We only fought over one thing, and that was that Popeye's two piece she wanted to have every Sunday. At the church, I would say, Miss Bailey, you don't need that two piece now. Oh, Pastor, you, I'm gonna have my two piece. I got to have chicken on Sunday. <laughs> and, and you know what, church? There are some people I've known my whole life that I can't remember. But Miss Bailey, whom I've known for a short period of time, I will never forget. The text says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm going to my seat, but I'll tell you this story and then I promise I'm going to let you go. When my wife and I first got married, we lived in a two-bedroom apartment for the first two years of our marriage. And um, each of those two years, we received a letter from the leasing office, usually on bright pastel colored paper, <laughs> notifying us that our lease was ending and the rent was being raised. Anybody ever got one of those letters? In the first year, we decided to renew the lease under the new terms. 
But that second year came around, and you know what we said? We ain't renewing this lease. We're going to buy a new home. And, and my brothers and sisters, we were spoiled here at one church because we were used to, Miss Bailey would go in the hospital a little while, and she would bounce back. She would go into the hospital with something with her lungs, and then she would come right back to us. She would, she would go in, have a little procedure of some type, and then come right back to us. But on March 18th, Miss Bailey said, I'm not renewing my lease. I'm going to a new home. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna help me here. I'm not, I'm not renewing my lease this time, Bruce. Eunice, I'm not renewing my lease this time. One church, I'm not renewing my lease this time. I'm going to a new home. And Miss Bailey, I just got one request today. You can't crown him until we get there. Just, I, I know, I know you're excited. I, I know you're gonna walk around heaven all day, but just wait, Miss Bailey, until we get there. You can't crown him because some of us are gonna be joining you, and then when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. My brothers and sisters, let your light shine. Listen, the light is not so that you can be seen. Your light is to help others see. Miss Bailey wasn't concerned about being seen. She wanted to help us see. Yeah, that's why she, she needed that sassiness. Because it, it helped us see. It got you together though, didn't it? Got you together real quick. Because sometimes, see this is the problem. Everybody's so sensitive today. Can't say nothing to them. Can't take correction. But you need to be told so that you can see. You need somebody to tell you you was wrong. You need somebody to tell you, set your hind parts down somewhere. So sensitive. Don't want nobody to say nothing to them. But that light is to help others see. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify you. Miss Bailey, we going to miss you. We going to miss you. That was her seat, that second row. That was, that was her seat. Everybody knew Miss Bailey wasn't here, didn't nobody sit in that seat. Just in case she showed up. Are y'all hearing me? And, 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 and she was, she, she, she is going to be missed. Her presence, her amens. She was a rock in this church. But we know she's now resting. That's what she was living for. She was living to live again. Amen. God bless you. We're ready to go. We do want to um, recess in an orderly fashion. Um, the parking lot is full and we have parking attendants that are out there uh, to help you to park. And um, if you need to get out, you can do that. If you need to get in line, um, you can do that as well. I would that everyone would, I want you to stand when I tell you, but I want you to stay where you are. The family is going to recess first. We're going to recess out this door. Uh, I'm going to lead out. The funeral directors will uh, come and direct us. The family will leave out first, and then um, they will go out, and if they need to uh, come back in, they can do that. And then once the family is out, then everyone else may recess to your visit vehicles. Would you all oblige us in that? Let me, yes, let me do that quickly. If there's anyone here that wants to give their life to Jesus Christ, We've got a few minutes. We can spend some time with you to make sure that you know Jesus. 
Because that's what Miss Bailey wanted us to see. She wanted us to see the goodness, the glory and greatness of God. This is a good day. This is a good atmosphere to give your life to Jesus Christ. And if you want to give him your heart, your life, just slip your hand up. We'll be glad to share Jesus with you and spend as much time with you today as you need. We don't want to miss this moment to let Miss Bailey's legacy live on inside of you. God bless you. We've done as the Lord has commanded. Yet there is room. Do we have flower bearers? When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Can we get some assistance with the flowers? When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. There's some who can assist with the flowers. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all, let us all stand. Please stand and stay where you are. What a day.